let's talk about, about LHS. How did mm. you found the LHS? Uh, mm. Which information decided that you put your attention on it and uh, visit the Poland and the LHS? Something uh, made me interested in diesels that were built in Russia, the former USSR. Mm. This was about 15 years ago. But information was very difficult to find. Hardly any books. YouTube was in its infancy. Uh, and YouTube just began to filter a few videos and uh, pictures of the M62. I wanted to know where I can see them the closest to my home in the UK. And I found out about this line which is like an artery coming from the former USSR. 400 kilometers almost to Germany. So, I need to go there. Then at the same time I found uh, the website www.lhs.pl and already there were reports on there from the summer camps. But at that time I was very interested in winter trains. In fact I was making a DVD called uh, Diesels in the Forest. For that DVD I had been to Estonia uh, I had been to Scotland, obviously, where we also have forests, to try to record diesels in the forest, as simple as that, and mostly in the snow. So, the LHS fell into these plans, but I saw that the LHS tribe, there were these people camping in fields in the summer. I knew about these people, this small group. I tried to make some contact, but I didn't speak Polish. And uh, at that time, Google Translate did not feature Polish, only French, German. So I could not make contact with these natives. So in uh, December 2007, I concocted my own excursion. Uh, deliberately in December, to film trains in the forest in the snow. I took a plane to, and here is the first Polish word, Orzeszow. <laughs> There I had arrangement to hire a small car, Nissan Micra, bright yellow, old lady's car. And with the uh, uh, agreement to drop it in Krakow airport. Perfect. Uh, then I went on to the Google information of the day to see the land. What is the land looking like? And the Google resolution was a lot less. It was ten times less than it is now today. So all I could see was that most of the area was small, long shaped fields. But there was some forest and just to the north of Zheshov there was some forest. So I went to this forest. I found a hotel, a Zyad. Uh, and with nil Polish I managed to check into this place for uh, initially two nights and every day I would drive uh, 10 kilometers from Nisko to Novoselic. Uh But for me I couldn't remember these names so I just remember the KP numbers. So I began at KP 153.7 I think and I walked towards uh, every day walked in the forest that's all. Uh, I saw pine martins, beautiful nature, silence and uh, my first day here was on a Sunday, so I thought this would be very bad, that there would be no traffic. So I was ready. I had a warm jacket, big red hat, uh, and I just thought, I'll go there. I'll wait six hours, 12 hours, whatever it takes to see a train. Uh, when I came to Novoselic, there was a concrete bridge abandoned, and I found a wooden ladder made by hand, with uh, just from sticks, with nails looked very unsafe but I climbed up this ladder and within 20 minutes first LHS train could be heard coming. Two green Gagarins uh, and this train came across the crossing with the crossing bell uh, making a, a good noise and then of course there was the famous LHS sound which is just a thunder that lasts for like a slow thunder that lasts for 10 minutes and that was beautiful and at that point I decided to stay in the hotel more nights and every day I just simply walked from KP 1.153 probably to KP uh, 158 something like that. That would do. On the second night, I think it was Monday, 
it was about 5 p.m. getting dark in December and I heard a train going into a siding. I was sure it was an LAS train. Uh, it came to a loud halt. Um, and even now I can't figure out where that would have been. But probably uh, 10 kilometers away from my spot. And I waited in the cold, in the dark, in the forest for two hours, maybe two and a half hours. It never came out. I gave up. I went back to the hotel, but uh, there were more to be seen. Uh, so I made a film, which is now on YouTube. Uh, no snow occurred on that trip, but that was just a precursor for other trips which were made later. And uh, uh, the only other spot which I went to was uh, KP218, Strezgomek. Strezgomek. <laughs> Strezgomek. <laughs> A small village conveniently located near the main road uh, to Yedrezov uh, and through to Krakow. I remember it was December, it was cold, there was absolutely zero wind for the entire four days I was here and the air was thick with the coal smell from houses. Uh, it was very pleasant. Uh, I saw one train at KP218 uh, and I uh, didn't visit this spot again for 11 years, it was today. So that was the first trip to the LHS. The big question is, oh, how about did I make the second trip to the LHS and why was that? So we went to, 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 uh, to Pusan in Magyarnia. It was 2013? Yeah. But why did I contact you for that trip? I do not know. Why did I not want to go somewhere else in the world? I think I wanted to see more of the LHS, it's very special. It's unique, it's the biggest diesel show in, in Europe. Uh, so, in 2013, I did manage to contact this tribe, these natives, uh, who under, undergo some very well, nicely documented uh, summer camps. So, uh, in 2013, we made contact. Uh, and this time I decided to come with my 4x4 vehicle uh, com completely uh, loaded up from Scotland with everything needed to live for uh, a week, I think it was. And uh, I made a very long journey. Uh, the, uh, maybe made a mistake coming from the uh, motorway near Krakow. I departed the motorway too early and I did a l big uh, drive through small villages for maybe uh, two out three hours which was for me two hours more than expected to join uh, this spot where Tomasz had uh, described the route in there using a YouTube video which was Magiania and uh, I arrived there much later than I expected without mobile phone so I couldn't let the guys know uh, where I was and uh, probably they didn't believe that a man would come that far for, for their camp but honestly it's special and that was just the opening because it became much more special after that uh, during that trip uh, with friendliness and camaraderie and exactly the same intent or, uh, amongst everybody to take the camp seriously and number one objective is of course the trains uh, so we uh, we met there at Mazionia I arrived just before nightfall and I saw men <laughs> in orange vests waving at me and uh, I think we were both surprised that the other person was in the right place eventually and uh, that was that but yeah the first thing I needed to do after that long drive of maybe 700 kilometers that day was to make a cup of tea in the English fashion <laughs> yeah subsequently we made a very nice camp uh, through to Kiepia where I left them and there was a tear in my eye when I left because it was uh, something uh, special like uh, never before. But you did not finish that time. It was a third and even fourth right now. Yeah. After that I thought again, once again, about diesels in the snow, diesels in the winter. And I love this. I think in the winter, in effect, you can have an even better sound than in the summer. Uh, because the earth is hard and uh, I like the sound of the engines very much. So, 
a, a small photograph inspired me of a Scandinavian uh, supplier of tents and there's a guy with a wigwam he's smoking a cigarette looks very relaxed there's a chimney coming out of this wigwam and I see that Scandinavian people are doing this they are camping in the winter in minus 20 so I thought well why don't we try and do this on the LHS so yeah the for me the the winter camp 2015 was uh, something very special difficult logistics uh, of course it's difficult to convince other people to even come camping in the winter <laughs> uh, but with a test of the tent at home it seemed to be uh, possible to sleep in the tent with a fire with a stove burning in the fire uh, all night uh, in any temperature so uh, we organized this camp for 2015 uh, with a, a schedule which was, let's say, reduced from the summer camp because uh, maybe two nights, three would be too much uh, and also a reduced number of people um, and uh, Tomas put his faith in me that this equipment was good enough that we're not going to die <laughs> freeze to death during his uh, winter camp so uh, we agreed some places which obviously were uh, once again in, in forest settings. Pushka and uh, Shojdi. Um, both very nice spots. Um, I arrived uh, in uh, Pushka first. Ground was frozen, there was light snow, it was very nice conditions. And uh, we had some rain on the first day but uh, we kept the fire burning all night in a military fashion with alarm clocks set and uh, watches uh, agreed so that one person would put logs or uh, other things into the fire every uh, 100 minutes or something like that uh, and it was no problem at all and I think uh, four or five of us uh, camped that night and we had a visit as well from our uh, one of our local colleagues but we also had a, a different kind of experience because we're all in the same all in the same tent and so we experienced the ups and downs together and uh, one of the downs was that the uh, drivers of the LHS trains thought it was very unusual to see cars and people uh, on the property uh, at this time of year after dark uh, so uh, they were agitated but <laughs> The uh, logistics for anybody to intervene in a, from a security force were also very difficult because the surrounding roads were like glass with uh, solid ice up to 25 millimeters thick. Uh, and so, <laughs> in effect, we were safe. We were held uh, safe uh, by the winter conditions. And within a few hours, uh, we heard the radio traffic calm down and uh, we began to really laugh about the experience. And at that point, I think we had some really good uh, times. Uh, a similar occurrence happened in Winter Camp 2017, two years later at Kiepia. Uh, and once again, the camaraderie after the initial uh, concerns uh, was so, so good, very memorable and real good laughs. Uh, of course trains came and uh, yeah we made some very nice films film of 2015 especially is probably my favorite film I would say that's my best LHS experience winter camp 2015 just two nights but everything was perfect trains were good and a good camaraderie yeah what are your fa favorite moments that you remembered from those trips at the, uh, to the LHS mm. Favorite moments were uh, cooking for the guys, cooking chicken curry and uh, food which we have in the UK and which uh, maybe I've uh, learnt to cook from travel around the world and we ate this, this stuff. Uh, the guys cooking me or the kielbasas and uh, in a profusion and uh, um, sampling good Polish food. Uh, we are talking about how to make food. Uh, sometimes on the camp, like in winter 2017, people brought the kind of produce they had prepared themselves. Uh, so yeah, the culinary experiences are very good actually. Uh, so they are good moments. Uh, obviously some great train recordings, especially in the night time where we can make recordings 10 minutes long, no problem. 
uh, which you probably cannot do uh, anywhere else in Europe, to be honest, uh, without interference from outside sound. Uh, other good moments are, uh, yeah, every departure is a good moment, saying goodbye to the guys, knowing that uh, we're going to see each other again in one or two years. Uh, this is all good. Um, my favorite spots are, I very much liked uh, watching the Ukrainian 2M62s coming o over the border. Uh, I like all of the forest spots. Uh, and I think in the future I'm going to search out, now I have the gradient information, I'm going to search out all of the gradients and try to do a trip where we uh, go to the summits. So we camp at all of the summits. This is the new uh, project which I'm thinking of uh, trying to promote. What is difficult for you at Poland during your trips? Maybe the language or something else? Yeah, language is a little bit difficult, but honestly everything is quite easy. Uh, there's no problem. Uh, Poland is a beautiful country. Uh, the summer here is absolutely stunning with good weather and beautiful countryside which uh, does not exist anywhere uh, west of the border between Germany and Poland. Um, this land is organic, it's hardly touched by man, the wildlife is in the air all the time. Uh, in winter it's also very nice. Uh, people are Hmm, would we call them friendly? Yeah, in the shops when you're speaking to them, they're friendly. They don't wave at you, they don't run around with a massive smile on their face, but, you know, they are very uh, surprised to see a foreigner in really somewhere outside of the tourist district of Krakow or Warsaw. So, uh, yeah, I have no problems at all. Police force are very friendly when giving out speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but we must explain our viewers that you are usually the uh, the, the sl slowest driver in our, in our team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a reputation for being the slowest driver. This year I have a sat nav and also some now some knowledge of how to get around. And uh, we are kind of uh, spreading out a little bit, making reports on where the trains are, and then coming together a few hours later, which is actually working out quite well. Maybe last question, your favorite Polish places at the LHS that, that are hard to, to pronounce? Ah, favorite places. Ah, let me see, I'm liking very much. Thanks, Tom, for the interview. Thank you, Tomasz, for your hard work in organizing these camps, which must be very stressful. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this guy is very stressed there. <laughs> let's, let's have a look. <laughs> uh, yeah, it must be like having to uh, farm cats into one place and then at the same time you have uh, dogs chasing the cats. I'm talking about the LHS uh, people who probably don't want us on the property. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Must be difficult to find the perfect spot for everybody, but I think Tom, as you do a very good job, and uh, the many YouTube videos and the excellent LHSPL site are the proof of that. Thank you. Thank you.